My name is Baba Bertha and I'm here to introduce you to the awakening where the granddaughter takes you Oh, what's that flying at me? I'm always having things flying at me. Did you see that? Oh, that sign, it flew at me. Did you not see it? I didn't imagine it, did I? Anyway, uh, the granddaughter is here to take you from the dark into the light. That's what the awakening is. And I've got a nice uh, orange towel on today. She said it makes me more creative. So there you go. Anyway, enjoy the awakening. Do this. She wants me to tell you to do this and to click the bell underneath. Uh, I'm doing this because um, I want to put out the message like uh, Charlie Wood's little lad, Justin. I'm sorry if I'm not as, uh, as sweet as he is, but there you go. I'm doing my best. I'm Baba Berta and I'm the grandmother. And please enjoy my show as well. Baba Berta show coming today on uh, Moving On TV. Please subscribe, Moving On TV community. Oh, it's, it's terrible. And wherever you are in the world, have a lovely day. Uh, here, there and everywhere. Where we go on, we go all. Don't know why she makes me say it, but I have to say it. I do. Welcome to the awakening. I haven't been doing awakenings because I've been not in a good space. Um, I never realized this was going to go on and on and on. And the longer this is going on, the more alone that I am without people, without work, to be around people, without proper com company, without you know, I'm dying inside and I don't think I'm going to make it. Um, I feel so sick and scared and lonely. Everybody needs a family or friends that you can be held by or tribal. Um, or children that you've created or grandchildren that your children have given you or a job that you can go to where you can get out and be around people I have no one and nothing I've been living in a village of sheep of lunatic I told my husband today that if I pass out or get sick, that if he puts me anywhere near that lot, I'll do something to myself and it will be his fault. And I'm telling all of you now, because I don't feel well anymore. I don't want to eat. Can't see the point. Because as soon as the winter hits, if they take our heating away, I'll be dead. I can't, I have something wrong with me physically that with extreme heat or extreme cold, feels, it makes me go into shock. All my muscles go into shock and constrict. And I, 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 I've had situations where I've had to get very quickly into the heat. I have to get very quickly into the heat or else my body goes into shock and then I can't function. This started with the menopause eight years ago. It's the same with extreme heat and the same with extreme cold. The only thing is with extreme heat, 
I could sit in the cold pool, but with extreme cold, there is nothing unless you've got the central heating and a hot bath. Now, because that, that lot are fighting back, because apparently we're winning, not that I see it, but apparently we're winning. These people sitting there on their high horses with their friends and their money and their families overlooking the Mediterranean. When I sit in a one bedroom, <clears throat> tiny little place with a heavy carpet, no air except because everything's broken and they don't come and fix it. Or if they do, you've got to get out. And as I say, I'm not functioning, okay? And I'm not functioning not because I'm mad or I've got a mental illness. I'm not functioning because I'm lonely, because I haven't got my work, my job that I had. I had a job where I used to go and I used to teach the elderly, the elderly that they're killing now. <laughs> I've got to watch it now. Same way as I watched my mother die and my father be euthanized. Now I've got to watch the elderly be euthanized. And there's nothing I can do about it. Nothing. I've just got to watch it. I wasn't lucky to have had a child. This body did not create a child. I wasn't lucky to be allowed to adopt. I wanted to adopt. You see, I knew that people need people in a positive way. I'm not a, a vampire. The husband or the partner, whoever, goes to his family, he sees his mom, his dad, his sister, his brother, they're all together, then he comes back here. And I look at him and it's like, well, you do, I don't feel anything there anymore towards him. I'm just left. What about me? I had a family. 10 years ago, I had a mom and a dad and a sister and three nieces, a family and the rest of all the other family that came with the sister and the nieces, loads of them. And I had friends, friends that didn't even come near me in my wheelchair, and a really good friend who moved to Scotland, and another friend, a young woman who was living with us, who we made her well, <laughs> Helen Greenway. You see, what you give, you don't get back. We made her well. I'm sorry to burst all your bubbles, but don't come on to my Facebook and tell me that you don't want to talk to me because I don't believe in your God. Where is your God? Where? Where was your God when the Jews were being murdered in concentration camps? God, come on, guys. God, that thing that sits on the, on the sky on a cloud and looks down on you, like some of these new age people that are sitting there telling you that everything's going to be amazing. Where, how, what, where? We're all drowning in, 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 in loneliness, in fear, in panic, in helplessness. Watching everything crumble. I'm watching, you know what? I grew up in wars, yeah? I grew up in wars. Do you know what happened in a war? You went in the air raid shelter and you all came together and you sang, and you kept each other sane, and you ate together. Here, no one does that, because you're so scared of a flu bug. And all the amazing light workers, like me, they're all over the place, but there's no one in this village, in the prisoner village, and if they are, all they care about is their families, like him. They're all families, they're all family orientated, that's it. I'm, I'm, I'm a forgotten one. No one will see me because they're too scared to see their own grandkids and great grandkids. What's it got to do with me? But the problem is when you get to a certain age, the body, and, and, and you know, don't tell me I'll be all right because I won't because the female body starts to suffer when you're in your thirties now because of the rubbish that they put into the water, the birth control pill went into the water and estrogen created so much, many problems for women. Infertility, yeah, me, couldn't have a child. Infertility, tumors, I, I've had breast lumps, we've all had it. It says I never go near that lot. And this is in a way is a cry for help. 
if anything happens to me, guys, because yesterday in the heat, I, I couldn't function. I tried, but because I felt scared to keep the door open, I'm not going to go into it. I was stuck in this house with one tiny window and I had to call a certain number to help me. I couldn't function. So that, you know, don't tell me I'll be okay. I don't feel I'm going to be okay. And those of you that want to meet up once a week in the park, you all go back to your kids and your families and your homes. I live with nothing here, as far as I'm concerned. I never wanted this. I left it before this lockdown. All I care about is to be that my, me and my cats are safe and, and no one will take us because they don't take animals and because they, well, because you can't rent if you don't have a job, you see? So what's going to happen to me? Now, if I could sort out this temperature problem, if there's anyone out there that can help me fix the extremities of heat and cold and save my life, then there may be opportunities to, 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 I don't know, someone in Spain is offering something and I can take the cats and I can start a new life. But at the moment, how much crying can you do? I can't do it anymore, guys. I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's like I'll go for a protest, maybe, or go somewhere one day every few weeks. Once every three months, uh, sorry, once every three weeks, maybe a person will come and give me a hug and spend time with me, maybe. I can't do it anymore. I don't know. Every single day is, is becoming the same now. And as I say, 10 years ago, I had, I had this woman that lived with us, we healed her from an eating disorder. And as soon as her parents bought her this mansion in Cornwall, that was the end of it. We never heard from her again. So, you know, people are not nice. People are not kind. And don't tell me that's me, that's not me. The same way as that elite is not me. And be very careful who you're watching at the moment. I'm not going to name names, but I don't think they have any empathy for us because if they had empathy, there are some things they wouldn't talk about at the moment. I'm talking to the ordinary forgotten person like me, if you're there. I know who my tribe are. They're all over the world and all over England, but they're not here. They're not here. And those that are here, they, 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 they can't function anymore. So they can't have people around, they can't function. So this is the cry for help. I've been bogged down with this temperature issue. No doctors can fix it the same way as a doctor is not. You don't need doctors, doctors are useless. They'll kill you now. All they do is can kill you with their medication or make you sicker, that's it. You don't need a doctor for anything. If you break your leg, you can make a cast on YouTube. They'll teach you. What do you need a doctor for? They're totally useless. They don't know anything. It's all money for the, the private ones. They just take and take and take. And you can see how greedy and disgusting they are because we all know that this COVID thing is totally preventable and curable. What you need is holistic doctors like Rebecca Briggs who know everything. Because all they do is study and study and study the, the, the makeup of the body, like me. But I'm stuck now with this temperature thing. And as I said, if anybody, if anybody can help me balance that and, and be able to live in extreme heat and extreme cold without worrying about whether they cut off our heating this winter, because everybody knows it's coming every light worker we talk to, they're going to fight back, guys, until Trump gets in. 
And watch Laurie Ladd. She tells you he's a light worker. She struggled with it. I knew, as light workers, we knew. We know what that man is. We're all light workers, and we need to be together in, in our own village, or our own country. So there's a few things I, I don't know about you. Because of this illness or condition that I have with temperature, so if I go on holiday, and I've had situations, I've gone on holiday to a boiling hot country, and, and men don't understand this. They don't get it. They think you're mad. If, because I was in this boiling hot country and they had the heating on because of a certain time of the year and I nearly died. I nearly threw myself out off the, off the balcony from, because my body felt like it, it literally feels like it's going to explode. And I couldn't cope at all. And this was at the beginning of the menopause, as I said, women. Your temperature fluctuates and the menopause is the worst time when it comes to the thyroid and the temperature, apart from all of you are poisoned from what they put in the water, fluoride, mainly fluoride and the things they put in our water that we don't seem to have a choice unless we can afford to buy something to change the water and stuff like that. But what I'm saying to you, and then if I went to a cold country, I'd have to be right up against the central heating I can't just go to bed and have um, a hot water bottle because it's my bones, it's inside my body. People don't seem to understand. People that don't seem to understand, they say, oh, you have a husband, why are you lonely? Would you live with one person in a tiny one bedroom house with nothing else except him? Nothing. Would you do that and be happy? That's not why I got married. That's not what I wanted. Would you be happy? No, you wouldn't. You'd have your friends. You'd have, at least you'd have a friend to go out for a coffee with that doesn't wear a, an effing mask because they're gone with the wind. They're gone, they're finished, they're mad. People say to me, I have friends. I go out with my friends. And I think, okay, I want to go out with my friends. Okay, who are they? Where are they? One that never even visited me in a wheelchair, and I've been in touch with him, doesn't answer texts at all, right? Him and his family. They wouldn't let me talk about sex trafficking. It was a no-no. You're not allowed to talk about children when I tried to explain to them what was going on. Okay, so they're gone, right? They're gone, nothing. The other one, the one who's got a mansion in Cornwall, the one I told you about, right? The one we saved her life, right? She's gone, right? Who else have I got? My, my Aunt Sarah, who's a loving human being, who goes out with her friends in Scotland regularly. In Scotland. I can't go to Scotland. I, I'm not in the position to get to Scotland at the moment, all right? So occasionally we talk on the phone because she's always at work. Right, who else? Friends. People that are just a um, beautiful, lovely lady who came here three weeks came here about uh, last week i think because i couldn't function anymore and sat here with me to protect me that was it and now she's in hospital because of her high blood pressure because she won't take medication so okay and she's bogged down with life another friend she's bogged down with life and with her little girl she's got no one to help her and i'm offering and i'm offering but they don't want my help so i have no one and nothing and I all, only contact with the, with the outer world is on Facebook. I have to ring people from all over the, the country and they'll sit on the phone with me and I cry. And then they go back. They've got the grandkids, the kids, the, the homes, some of them, but they've got that connection to humans. I sit here and I talk to a computer or I talk to a face on, on Facebook. That's it. That's it. I used to go to the Samaritans because when I didn't have a job before this, I'd get in the car and I'm telling you everything. I go to the Samaritans because I had no one, no one, no one, no one. This is not a new thing because I've always been a free thinker and I couldn't sit there talking about EastEnders, the Royal family and all that fucking stuff when I knew the truth. So everyone, that's all they talk about. The kids, the grandkids, EastEnders, how bad Trump is, and that's it. So I, hadn't, I couldn't be around them, right? 
So I'd go to the Samaritans and I'd sit with the Samaritans. Guess what? You can't do that anymore because of a flu bug. You can't even sit with the Samaritans at dog clubs. It's too hot. No empathy. No. It's absolutely boiling in this tiny one bedroom. I need the door open for the air to come from outside. Do you know what mad is in America? Mad is angry. And I'm fucking angry. So you can't even go and sit in the Samaritans, right? What do you go do? Go outside to the high street where the loonies are wearing masks and you want to tell them that they've destroyed your world. Because they're so mad. How can anyone wear a mask and breathe in carbon dioxide? So I get myself a job. I got a job. Not only that, I used to go around all the residential homes with my accordion singing and performing and earning money. That was my work. I loved it. And then I got a job as an activities officer and I loved it. I loved my residence. I used to do singing. I used to do, I played the accordion for them. I, I would sing. I would do shows with them, moving on TV shows. I, I would do debates with them. And then this madness struck, this lie. And, and, and one day I hugged a resident because she was crying and they sacked me. Because I went on Facebook and told you the truth of how they call them. They go there to die. It was called Berry Lodge, B-U-R-Y. Who would put their family in Berry Lodge, B-U-R-Y, Berry? You tell me. Because they're killing them. Oh, and in the meantime, the family I was born into, before that, four years ago, euthanized my father. <laughs> they euthanized him and didn't even tell me. So you tell me. That's it. It's like you've burnt all your bridges. You've got no job. So now I've got this musical that I've written, but everyone who's involved with it are trying to earn a tiny bit of money to keep their families together. So I see them once every two, every three weeks, maybe on Zoom, or the occasional one will come around. That's it. Because they've all got to work to keep their families together. Or they, you know, they've got families, they've got kids. And, and then there's me. Me. <laughs> I can't do it anymore. This is what causes mental illness in the first place, you idiots. And then they send you to a psychiatrist and you get diagnosed. I don't know what to say to you, except this is, to me, this is killing me. And I need people to be here. Friends, people that say they care. Come with me to the allotment and sit with me and hug me and meditate with me. Or invite me to you. Make me feel like I matter in some way. <laughs> because I don't think I'll make it. I don't think I can make it. And it's not because I wasn't given the, the strongest spirit in the world. It's because this is not right, the way people are being left. It's not right. And you know, as I said to you, when you're finding out about people being killed in residential homes, that brings back the way they euthanize my dad without even asking me. And no one paid for that. No one did that. No one, no one will pay, pay for that. No one will pay the price. They all got away with it and took my father's home. And they're all together against me. So I had to deal with all of that. And now I can't go back and work. How can I work? You've got to wear a mask. Where will I work? So I sit here on the computer. But you see, if I see you guys once every couple of weeks, I've got to come back to this horrible, empty life on my own in a place I hate, in a village of lunatics and morons. And I just, this is, I'm begging you to help me to find something to keep me alive now because i'm losing my will to live all right i'm losing my will to live i'm losing my will to work i don't want to do moving on tv anymore i don't want to work it's too hot now in here and there's nothing to cool me down 
but I can't go to the allotment. The heat is unbearable and there's no water. No one cares. No one cares. No one. So as I said to you, at the moment, I, you do care on social media. That's it. But what I need is I need someone who can heal my temperature. If you can heal my temperature, there are options for me to get out. Because if I don't have that certainty, you see, I created a life where I knew that I would be able to breathe. Like I knew where I could go. The canaries, the, the, the um, temperature in the canaries is, is very balanced. And I was very happy there. I was well. I knew where to go. But of course, now how can I go to an airport? I cannot be around that system. I cannot wear a mask. I cannot go around, deal with that stuff. I can't get on the plane. I, 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 I just can't do it. I, I can't do it, all right, guys? I can't. And I don't want to lose my cats. So if you can come up with a solution. I rang up the prayer line. And I said, I need an angel. Well, just a friend, just a friend to help me get through this with all of you. In some way. So I, just a friend to be here at least once a week regularly to go out with me, a female friend or, or a caring, sensitive empath, a red-pilled, awoke empath to take me out so we could go somewhere together and laugh about everything. Don't leave me on my own all the time with this, with that man who isn't one of us. <laughs> Please, because if I get sick, they'll finish me off. He'll, his family will finish me off. There's a, because I'm not one of them. And I'm trapped here. I can't go into that society. I'm not strong enough at the moment. I need to be with my tribe. I swear to God, guys, if I had money now, we'd have that place that you could all come to all the time. Knock on my door. I'd be there for you and I'll hug you. I love you. <laughs>